You want to show off your green room? Come on. Own oh, room. You have your own pretty window you can look outside every morning. There's no place like home. And for Sergeant J.D. Williams and his family, having a place to call their own has been a long time coming. I think half of my daughter's life, she grew up in a hotel room. It's been pretty stressful, you know, for the, for the past couple of years that I've been injured. On October 9, 2010, Williams stepped on an IED and the explosion took both legs and an arm. I remember rolling over on my back and looking at my hands and then it was all covered in blood and looked over at my right arm and noticed it was gone and started taking contact from the enemy. They weren't really sure exactly, you know, what his injuries were, what was gonna happen, if he was gonna make it. He did make it, but the road back has been slow and long. Someone gave me the advice when all of this first happened that, you know, things will be better tomorrow. Today might not be the greatest day, but tomorrow will be better. So just don't give up. And it's been full of unexpected blessings. <laughs> First and foremost, a new home that J.D. calls his House of Valor, one built with his specific needs in mind. Double oven, nice low oven so J.D. can cook, putting stuff in the lower oven, right? I do the cooking anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> Kelly Paul, wife of Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, gave CBN News a special tour. She serves on the board of Helping a Hero, the organization that gave J.D. this home. They have an antler chandelier because J.D. is originally from Montana and he loves to hunt. Bamboo floors, and this is the hardest product that they said that you could get uh, for wheelchairs or the legs that JD has. It's been quite quite an experience for, for for you to be a blessing to someone, but yet you've been kind of blessed in the process too. I would think. You just see the light in people. You see God working through people. People are so grateful sometimes to have the opportunity to express goodness. Some 90 injured veterans across more than 20 states now live in homes that allow them to be self-sufficient. So just to be able to watch him, you know, learn to relive his life again on his own without help, I mean, you, you can't ask for anything better than that. Everyone we talked to felt the same way, especially Benny Jones, who wasn't too keen on helping out in the beginning. I didn't want to do this. Really? I'm telling you the truth. I didn't want to do it. His wife saw an article in the paper about the effort. Well, she repeatedly asked him to read it. And each time, he said no. Honey, we're real busy. I'll read it when I get a chance. When I read the story, that was it. Uh, God wouldn't let me not do it. When you can tell when God's voice is talking to you. We called Mrs. Paul and we said, what can we do to help? She said, we need a builder. I said, you've got one. But when asked to help, people often end up giving more. This is one of the few projects that people actually call you up and say, thank you for asking me to give, for letting me have the opportunity to change this family's life. One anonymous donor mailed 500 bucks in $20 bills to builder Larkin Ritter. That's what's been neat. No one wants credit. Nobody's passing business cards out. Yeah. They're all just... What can I do? The four bedroom home is worth around $400,000, but helping a vet helped complete it for about $150,000 in cash. Senator Rand Paul joined forces with Kentucky Democrat John Yarmuth to raise money for the organization. Republicans and Democrats don't always agree in Washington. That's a news flash. But one thing we do seem to come together on is trying to help our wounded veterans. Whether you believe in the war or not in the war, but you see what this family's been through and what he's gave and his commitment and his sacrifice for this country. It's very little this ask of us. But J.D. won't call it a sacrifice. I was a very, very fortunate leader to not lose anybody, both deployments that I've done, and uh, and still be here today, you know, and being able to, you know, say I, I did take a IED out, of, you know, out of everybody else, out of harm's way just to, you know, and I lived through it. I remember looking up at the sky and asking God, like, give me one more chance, you know, and and for him to uh, come back and have all these good people that live right here, build us a home and stuff, it's, it's, it's definitely God, you know, looking out for us. And I feel like I died that day and went to heaven because everything's just been so smooth for us and so, so amazing that I, 
I feel like a better man today than I was before I got injured. Reporting from Auburn, Kentucky, I'm David Brody, CBN News.